Protein supplementation is healthy. Everyone makes a big deal about protein, 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 whether it may be for weight loss or just to live a healthy lifestyle. So is supplementing protein via a tub that you buy off of a gym counter healthy for you? Welcome back to our channel and if you're new here consider subscribing. We do health tip trick and hack videos and Midbuster videos just like this one every week. As always these videos have a subject which in this case is protein and protein supplementation. Then we move on to the facts, figures and the research and lastly the long awaited conclusion or the verdict. Protein is a class of nitrogenous organic compounds which contains one or more long chain amino acids and are an essential part of all living organisms, especially as structural components of our body tissues, ranging from muscle to hair. Proteins are also a significant part of our diet. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. There are 20 total number of amino acids, out of which nine are essential amino acids and 11 of them are non-essential amino acids. Any non-essential amino acids, your body has the ability to create it themselves, whereas the other nine which are essential, you would need to consume it via your diet. In terms of sources, there's multiple number of protein sources, ranging from meat, fish, poultry, milk, and lastly, supplementation as well. Whether it may be a agenda of media or the fixation onto a healthy lifestyle or increasing muscle growth, protein seems to be counted on for majority of the time. And to increase consumption of protein, one of the main ways that is suggested via media and influences in today's world is protein supplementation. Number one, protein absorption rates. Supplementations have the fastest absorption rate due to its refined nature, followed on by flaky fish, animal proteins, and lastly, plant-based proteins. Plant and animal-based proteins have extended amounts of absorption rates due to its complex structure. However, animal protein digestion largely happens in your stomach, giving your small intestine the rest. Whereas plant-based proteins use majority of your intestinal tract to absorb. The key is that your intestinal tract and your gut needs to be equipped with the right level of bacteria and the enzymes for absorption to occur from both sources. So absorption rate isn't the key, it's the gut bacteria health which is of more importance. Number two, plant-based proteins versus animal-based proteins. As we mentioned before, there's 20 different types of amino acids that your body requires. Animal-based proteins from fish, meat, dairy, and eggs have the closest profile to the protein that's found in your body. And these are considered complete proteins as these contain all essential amino acids, whereas plant-based sources do not contain all essential amino acids. The one exception to this is soy, which have proved to have all essential amino acids, however, out of which two have very low quantities and therefore not very comparable to an animal-based source. In addition to this, when you consider a choice of protein, you might also need to consider the availability of other micronutrients such as vitamin B12 or fiber. Whereas you might have heightened levels of vitamin B12 and iron from animal sources, you would also get higher levels of fiber from plant-based sources. So the importance should be emphasized on the ratios. So ensure that your plate is two thirds plant-based and one third meat-based. Number three, supplementation. There are two main types of supplementation, casing and weight. The primary difference between the two types of supplementation is the time taken to digest due to its length of the protein peptide bond. Majority of the reason that protein has received such attention is due to the fitness industry and fitness influencers consistently forcing the idea of more protein equals more muscle. However, one thing that you need to be conscious of is higher levels of protein doesn't necessarily translate into muscle, which additionally puts stress on your liver and kidneys as these need to be processed and excreted as urea. To make things worse, majority of these sub supplements have fillers such as genetically modified corn, sugar and preservatives which all contribute 
two, impacting your gut health. And lastly, we recommend that you do not have casein just before bed. Yes, it's true that it is a long digesting protein, but if your body is gonna use 80% of its energy on your digestive tract, breaking down the protein, it's not gonna do the job that it's meant to do overnight. Number four, organic versus non-organic. Yes, I do have a protein supplementation sometimes, although grass-fed, no additives, just pure whey protein with some almond milk or a banana, as organic products have proven to have a higher nutrition profile, increased bioavailability, ensures humane treatment of animals, and lastly eliminates the preservatives and the fillers which might be via genetically modified sources such as corn or waxy maize. And in addition to that, when it is whole food protein sources, when it comes to meat, make sure that it's grass-fed for life if it's chicken, that they have access to roaming and are not fed genetically modified corn. And when it comes to fish, ensure that they're wild and not farmed. Number five, protein in processed food. The challenge here is that when you consume it with processed food, you also consume refined sugars, processed carbs, and trans fats. Take a fast food burger combo. You get a soda, fries, and a burger. This complicates the issue as proteins are much more than just a macro ingredient which is mentioned on a label of a fast food burger. Preparation tips. Ensure that when you use supplementation, do not use it as a supplement to flour. I've seen numerous instances where whey protein has been used to create pancakes. These instances where protein is exposed to higher levels of heat have the probability to denature it or alter its composition, making it very difficult for your body to digest. With all that said, now do you think we're ready to bust this myth? Are protein supplements healthy? No, not the conventional protein supplements. If you do wanna have protein supplementation, ensure that there's no preservatives, no sugar, and from an organic source. For example, grass-fed whey protein. Some of the suggestions that we have and we use are linked in the description below. The best case scenario is that you get all your protein sources via whole foods and avoid any supplementation unless required. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button. And we'll see you on the next video.